I want you just to take a moment and I want you to envision just the home that you see yourself in in maybe the next two, three or even five years. I want you to envision the most beautiful home that you've seen. Maybe one that you haven't. But I want you to really paint the picture. Maybe for you, you might say, John, I want that home to have two rooms. I want that home to have five rooms, a two car garage. And even if I had it my way, I would have a large living room so I can have all my family, all my friends and everybody that I know. They can come over to all the holidays and all the celebrations that we have. Somebody else might say, John, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not get carried away, John. You told me to have a vision, but I don't want to get too carried away and get wrapped up in the details. She so might say, well, I'm just, I'm simple. I'm easy. I just want a home, maybe with a garage. Out here in Batesville, I just want to relax. I want to take it easy. I don't want all that stress of having to deal with all those rooms and have that stress of dealing with that maintenance. So just give me something simple. That's all that I desire. Now I want you all to go ahead and just open your eyes for me. And now I just want us to talk for a second because for me there, there was a point in time where I couldn't, I couldn't envision anything past what my current reality was. For some of you all, you might be in the same space now. You might say, John, I hear you telling me to envision something that I've never seen before. But at the same time, I feel like I, I feel like there's more to life. I feel like I, I can achieve more than just what I see with my sight. If I close my eyes and I realize that, yes, I'm at UACCB, but let me just take a moment and let me begin to envision what I can see beyond the next year of my life, beyond the next two years of my life, where could I potentially be? So I want to challenge you all just in that. Just every once in a while, just tap into the vision because ultimately that goes back to the blueprint. That goes back to the start. In the blueprint, we all know that architects, engineers, all those individuals, they sketch it out for what they desire to later create. So if we start with the vision, there's no telling what we'll be able to create eventually. But I wasn't always in this space. I found myself on a college campus. It was called Richland College. Okay, and while I was here, my first year, I would go to class, I would go home. I would go to class, Robin. I would go home. That's it, I didn't want to talk to anybody, didn't want to get to know anybody, didn't want to make any friends because I was like, I'm not gonna be here that long. Has anybody felt like that? You're like, I'm not gonna be here that long, why do I need to make friends? You're smiling. <laughs> you must have been there before. You're like, I don't want to make friends for what? That's not necessary. I'm like, I'm not going to be here that long. So that whole first year of my college experience was a blur. Didn't make any friends. Didn't really want to talk to anybody. And I was like, oh, but they have a basketball team. Let me see about that. So ultimately, my first year, I was going to class, falling asleep in class, failing class. And it was repetitive. Second time, math class, go to sleep. In class, fail. But then it was my second year where I finally started to wake up. My second year, I began to understand, well, maybe, maybe I should talk to somebody. Like at least one person, right? Like, let me just see. The thing I want us to understand is today that we have to make sure that we get connected. Some of you might say, John, I mean, that, that sounds so simple, but I'm still not trying to make any friends. I don't want to talk to anybody. You can make a lifelong friend with somebody based on the right relationship. But I want us just to understand, like, sometimes we can miss out on the best thing that's happened in our life, the best relationship, the best connection, by just taking a moment and getting out of our comfort zone or maybe talking to the other individual that you might see sitting by themselves on campus. Or maybe just taking a different route to class one day, seeing who you bump into. And some of us might say, John, I'm an introvert. I don't really do that. I don't want to do that. I would just challenge you just if you don't even know what to say, you don't know who to talk to. I guarantee if you look up from a phone every once in a while, put it in our pocket for a second. You know, sneaky still heavy music going, but put it in your pocket. And then just ask somebody a question. And I would say asking this question, what are you passionate about? 
That's a question I guarantee you ask somebody that they're going to do one of two things. They're going to answer you. Or they're going to say, wow, that's a good question. I never, I never really thought about that. And then you open up a conversation to hear somebody talk about themselves. Too often, I don't think we create the opportunity to let people talk about themselves. But I think more times than not, we want to volunteer that. Oh, I do this. I do that. I'm great at this. I'm great at that. Did anybody ask you what you're great at? You're just, oh, you're just telling me. Okay. And then when that happens, nobody really wants to. Nobody really wants to hear. So I want to challenge this. Let's, let's, let's make sure we, we get connected. The next thing I want, I want us to just really take away today is leveraging your resources. There's so many resources on this campus. I know y'all have, I know you have the tutoring center. I know you have student support services. But even outside of that, some of y'all might say, John, I don't need that. I don't need the tutoring center. Leverage relationships. And I don't mean leverage relationships by seeing what you can get, but see what you can give to somebody else. Because we all know we've all seen a friend or somebody in need. Maybe a colleague, maybe a fellow student, maybe a professor. You might see your professor and the professor looks like they're trying to carry all this paper and trying to do all these different things. You're like, well, that's my professor. They can take care of it. I'll let them take that on their own. They're fine. But when we get to a place and then we start to leverage those resources, we then begin to get to the space and to the place to where we create opportunities to create genuine relationships. In order to secure your dream, in order to secure your livelihood, in order to secure whatever you desire for your life, you have to have a firm foundation. That firm foundation looks like getting connected with somebody on campus that you can talk to. There's been times in my life I've almost taken that for granted, having a friend that I can talk to without judgment. Having a friend that I can say certain things to, I can let it loose. He's like, okay, John, you good? And I'm like, man, I'm good. I feel so much better. He's like, okay, cool. We'll hang up the phone. I'll say, I love you, man. He'll say, I love you. We'll hang up the phone and we'll move on. But that matters. And as you all begin to elevate from where you are in whatever classification or whatever area you are in your life, like we need people for different levels of our life because everybody that we're friends with now are not going to be friends with us next year. Two years from now, five years from now, ten years from now. Because some people might begin to get jealous of your own success. So keep that in mind. We have to have a firm foundation by being connected, but utilize your resources. Some of y'all have professors and different people that you have no relationship with whatsoever. They see you coming in. They see you going out. How can you begin to create a different level of relationship with that individual? Because they may be in a place that you aspire to be. So it would make sense to get to know them on a little bit of a different level. But lastly, understanding, I'm talking about foundation. So I created a formula. The blueprint to success. The formula broken down, it looks like this. The D. We're talking about foundation. The D starts with everybody. This is the tangible application part. Someone's like, John, I didn't get any notes. I didn't get nothing. Well, this is the tangible part. The D. Make a decision. Make a decision. Somebody might say, John, I can't achieve my goals. I can't get to where I want to. You have to make a decision on what you want first. The second part of the blueprint, the passion. Yes, this is a saw. It's not a power saw because I don't want to get in trouble with Mr. Freeze or anybody else. But it's a saw. The saw represents the passion. Just like I told you off, you're struggling to start a conversation with somebody else. Identify what your passion is. For the person in the back of the room who says, John, I don't know what my passion is. I've never thought about it. Well, take some time. And identify what that thing is that gets you emotional. It gets you riled up. You get so excited to do this in the morning. What's that passion that's driving you? Because once we make a decision to commit and then we add the passion, that's like putting gas in your car. It gets us going. Strategy, 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 strategy. How do I create a strategy, John? I would advise you to connect with somebody who's doing what you want to do. I know this is like the social media generation for all of us, right? This social media. If you can find that person on social media or even if they have any type of social media, 
You can follow them and just watch what some people do. That's the easy version. Or you can reach out to them. See if somebody's willing to be your mentor. Seeing if you can follow in some steps that they've taken. Seeing what worked for them. Seeing what books they read. Different stuff like that. Develop a strategy. And then lastly, this one's my favorite part. The action. It's so easy to watch other people pursuing their dreams. It's so easy to watch other people and talk about them and say, ha ha, look what they did wrong, look what they did wrong, they messed up, ah, look at them fall, that's so funny. But the issue with that is if you're watching somebody else fall, then you're not playing the game of your own life. If you're too busy on the sidelines of a game, you're not in the middle of the action. So you have to make a decision, you have to commit to that process you add in your passion because you began to take that passion and then that ultimately helps you put together a strategy because you're excited about something. You're like, oh my goodness, John had me close my eyes. He had me envision a house. Man, this is so exciting. Then you open your eyes and you say, wow, I saw the house. I'm at the blueprint. What can I begin to fill in the middle? How can I fill in the space? How can I fill in the blanks? What does that look like? And then once you put that strategy together, then you take your action. And we all have the ability to do all of these things. Because I created this formula and I hate math. But I figured that it might help somebody else out. So I said this might be, this might be beneficial. So the blueprint to success, the blueprint to life, honestly, if we just weave in these things, I don't feel that there's an area that this doesn't apply. If you're studying nursing, if you're a high school student getting ready to transition to college, even if we're adult learners and even if we're grown, like we're grown, grown, like we have bills and all that other stuff, we can still apply this stuff and this will work for a business plan. So today I want to I wanna just challenge you all just in that, just take some time and just be able to identify what will best serve you going through this particular blueprint. Because when we began to apply this, like I said, it works. It works. Well, I thought he was a really great speaker and he kept my focus all day long, which is great because usually speakers can't do that with me. Um, but something that I got out of him talking was look at your life and say, oh, well, I can get past this or I can do something bigger than this or I can, you know, make something of my life that I never thought that I could. So it's just been really great listening to him and learning that stuff. He really got my attention talking about being passionate and stuff because I failed to be passionate at things. I'm like, oh, well, that's fun. I'm going to do this. And it's just, no, it doesn't work. You have to really be into what you're doing. So I took away a lot of what he said about being passionate about what you do because if you're not passionate about it then you're not going to enjoy it you know i am a non-traditional student and i haven't been to school in 15 years you know once i decided and then acted on that it that will speak volumes not only to non-traditional students but hopefully to traditional students but that's that whole formula he came up with it really stood out because it's the truth 